By the way, can you see my screen, Travis? Say that again. Can you see my PowerPoint? Uh, I am not seeing it yet. Let me switch you over to host. Now go ahead and try to share the screen again. There we go. Okay. All right, since we were a little bit late on this one getting going, why don't you go ahead and, and get right to it, Jack. Okay. Uh, thank you everyone for uh, making the time to attend uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, my name is, uh, I, I typically go by Jack. My first name is Joachim. And uh, I am an instructional designer at Nevada State College. And uh, my presentation basically focuses on three pedagogical proven frameworks uh, to organize effective and efficient online uh, course uh, experiences. And the first one is backward design, which I imagine most of you, if not all, are familiar with. The second one is quality matters rubric, which some of you may be using. And the third one is Gagne nine events of instruction, which is familiar to most uh, instructional designers. So, um, do you see my advancement? No, we can't. Is it advancing? Uh, no, it's not. Okay, uh, let me stop my screen and because I have uh, three screens and that might be the problem. Oh, Zoom, right? <laughs> yeah. So is it advancing? No, we're not seeing it. No. I saw it. But now I don't. I don't know what's being. There it okay. is. Is it advancing now? Yes. Okay. Hey, that's working. So the presentation focus will be, will be based on those three. So I'm gonna move ahead. And uh, I was gonna build some poll questions and because we're out of time anyway. But anyway, think about these six questions uh, and, and, and for a minute and, and see if you practice these elements in your course design. So, and the reason for this is that, you know, you want to make sure that you, you know, you align your learning objectives and assessments before you develop your course content. Uh, secondly, that you intentionally embed assessments in your learning content, be it videos, text, or PowerPoint, uh, so that students can self-assess as they progress. And the third part is that, you know, you explore and gather evidence about student learning from your assessment outcomes so that that will guide your instruction as well because those become diagnostic tools for you to improve your instruction as well uh, apart from assessing the learner and then of course we'll look into do you you know how many of you are implementing backward design uh, quality matters and the nine events so is it advancing i think we should be good going forward So do you guys see uh, this statement from Gangye? Yeah, we can see it. So I'll let you read this for a moment. Uh, 
And uh, Gagne, as we, you know, uh, most of uh, instructional designers in some circuits know, was one of the leading instructional designers. And this statement is very important because if, if we are going to evaluate students based on our instruction, then the, the performance is what should lead to the design. What do we want them to know and be able to, to perform for observation? So that should be the key and the driving factor for us to design uh, our courses. And uh, Gagne also says that it is necessary for you to simplify your objectives because every content expert will write your objectives from an instructor perspective. However well you try to break it down to students, you will still write from your expertise. And so the next step is to break it down to your students. And the way to do that is to just ask the simple questions. How will you know that a student understands a concept, for example? So even if you talk about students being able to understand a particular concept, uh, it is so broad, but when you are designing the instruction, when you ask yourself, how will I know? What manner of assessments will help me be able to determine that the learner knows this? And so you revise your objectives in that manner as you build your modules and your, your, your lessons. And uh, this, this is a typical framework uh, for course, course design. Uh, and it is instruction centered, as you will see. Uh, first, we, we state our objectives and then we go ahead and design learning experiences, gather the resources and everything. And then we'll move on to the assessment. This is the majority of what we do, and this is what perpetuates instructor centeredness in terms of course design. As you can see, there's a missing piece here. And you make an assumption. Uh, Wigginson Matai, uh, you know, the, the authors of Buckwell Design, uh, say the, the, this is the key problem because you, you continue to make assumptions that because you have de developed the objectives and stated them to the students and gone ahead and developed your learning experiences accordingly, therefore the assessments are congruent when that is not indeed the case. And so the, the other format is that, as you can see here, you are moving assessments to the second part. So the first thing is as you list your objectives, the next thing is to make sure that they are, you know, you look at your assessments. How am I going to assess this objective? And if you write the, the assessments, you know, given this circumstance, the student will be able to perform this or do this in this manner. And when you write that down, then you look and see, okay, is your assessment congruent with your objective? So you go back and, you know, so you align the two. And if you do this, then you get, you get instruction alignment. And according to Wiggins and Matai, if you write your objectives this way, you can actually cover the objectives. And from the assessments, another content expert will be able to write objectives that are appropriate for this. So this is a very good model. And once you align your objectives and assessments, then you can develop instructional materials, learning experiences, because you are being guided by your assessments as well as your objectives. And the good thing about this is also that this is where you choose your technologies. You know, um, why will I use uh, Kahoot, for example? Why will I use Flipgrid? Your, your technologies and then looking at your different types of learners. Do you have people who need accessibility? Universal design for learning, different types of learners. Then you are better able to address those over here, being guided by both your objectives and your assessments. And so the backward design model really is a very good way to begin with instructional alignment. Uh, first, are you, are you teaching what you are assessing and are you assessing what you are teaching? And so by always beginning with the end in mind, whether it is a discussion forum, uh, a breakout room activity, wherever it is, when you always begin with your learning objectives and your assessments, uh, you, you can't go wrong and the learner will be able to efficiently uh, learn. And so the question is, uh, always be, it's a recursive process and very reliable as uh, our goal to improve. That you begin the learning objectives each time 
Next, you go to the assessments. How are you going to assess the objective before you do anything about learning experiences? So I will stop here and see if, you know, if, are there any questions, uh, Travis? Okay, uh, I'll proceed. So the second part of my, you know, uh, of this uh, presentation is based on the quality matters, quality matters rubric. And for those of you who are quality matters uh, institutions, you'll be very familiar with this. Some of you may be familiar with it, even though you haven't used it. And uh, the quality matters rubric mm -hmm. focuses on the after, after the fact. They are looking into your course to see how you've developed it from the general standard one, which is the course overview introduction, all the way to accessibility. And uh, um, when you look at general standards two and three, which are learning objectives and competencies and assessments and measurement, if you know that your course is going to be evaluated based on this criteria, why don't you use that evaluation criteria to design the course to begin with? That way, when it is being evaluated, uh, you, you know, you, you, you make sure that you are hitting all the, the requirements. And so once you, you do this, you can see how this aligns with the uh, backward design model because when you state your objectives very well and you list your assessments and they are congruent, then you can build your instructional materials, design your course activities and learn interaction accordingly, select the appropriate course technology, uh, consider the learner support, and then accessibility and usability. And when you do all this, then you go to your course overview introduction and you can introduce the course and then introduce your modules uh, or your lessons accordingly, and you can't go wrong. So let's see how that works. Uh, this looks very busy, but essentially the quality matters, I'm trying to prove it, the quality matters rubric is, is basically uh, the same as backward design because when you talk about your, your course outcomes, what learners should be able to do after you teach them, you look and see how are you, are they discreetly measurable? So if, they are, if it's a quiz, how is a quiz assessing the, the learning outcomes at the course level? If, if, if it's a discussion forum, if it's an essay, if it's a group project. So you, you actually align the assessment and the learning objectives. Secondly, for your modules and your units, you do the same thing. What are the module outcomes, unit outcomes for your course? And so you look at the discrete competencies that you want to assess, and then you are able to align those. And thirdly, all your you know all all learning competencies uh, are also addressed at the end. So from an instruction design standpoint, a broad overview of the course. What should students know about this course? And for each module, what should students know about each module, uh, each lesson, and then all the way to the end when you complete. This kind of gives you a very good framework to introduce the course, ask good questions for the students as they progress, and then have a conclusion at the end of each module by asking students what isn't clear, what did you like about this, what was not clear, what questions did you have, where did you struggle? And so by having this type of framework, you are better able to meet the needs of learners and improve your own instructional practice as well. And so as a process, uh, just to reiterate, backward design guides you to focus on what it is that learners should be learning, uh, what it is that, how can they demonstrate that learning that you want and, and, and how will you assess it? Quality matters has the same thing if you look at the quality standards uh, two and three that the learning objectives and competencies need to be written from a learner's perspective and that your, your assessment and measurement has really be assessing what you're teaching, which then leads to the nine events of Gagné, which I will you know, talk about. So again, uh, a very reliable recursive process and uh, very soon we'll break into teams so that you guys can kind of discuss this and we'll come back and see how you make sense of this. So after you do your backward design and you align your objectives with your assessments with backward design or with a quality matters rubric, 
Then when you go to present to your learner, whether it is synchronous or asynchronous, for each module, you are able to begin with gain the learner's attention. How will you gain the learner's attention? If it is synchronous, you might want to ask a question. What will you do after COVID? And as you know, students are behind their you know, avatars. So this is how you get students to respond. And you let them know in advance that I'm going to be asking students to ask, to ask to answer questions. I'm not, I'm not picking on you. Everybody has something to bring. And this is how I'm going to encourage you and help you contribute to the learning process as a community of learners. And so by giving learners attention, you can put up a poll and just say, OK, what would you do after COVID? And you let them know this is not going to be anonymous. Your name is going to be there. And that gets them to begin to get ready for the lesson. And the next thing about Gagne is the, the second of, you know, event that Gagne uh, encourages is that you then present the objective. This is what we're going to learn today. And after you learn it, this is what I expect you to be able to do. And then the third part is prior learning. Uh, how is this learning related to anything you've covered before? Or what you and this is good because when we talk about universal design for learning or meeting the needs of different types of learners, you, you know, for example, if you're teaching a course where some students are taking as a major and other students are taking it as an elective, uh, you, you are better prepared to meet the needs of those different tasks because some will probably come in with prior knowledge and others will not. But you want to build a bridge so that at the end of your presentation, everybody walks away being about the same level. And then the fourth event of Gagne is to present the information. And then, you know, number five is you, you guide the learners, uh, scaffolding, make sure that they understand. And then you elicit performance. So if, if you are teaching synchronously, you, you know, from an instruction design standpoint, we advise that if you speak for more than five, seven minutes without asking a question, chances are you've lost about half of your students. So you elicit performance by asking questions, fly by as you teach. If it is a video students have to watch, you want to make sure you stop around seven minutes, five to seven minutes and ask a question for them to ponder take a quiz or something self-assessed before they continue. Uh, you know, just give learners the opportunity to self-assess, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous. And then uh, number seven, you provide feedback. You know, look, you know, how, how you know, guiding them to understand how this might work uh, in, 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 you know, in terms of learning gaps, what do they know uh, from prodding uh, so that you can you can better help them learn you know, learn well, and then uh, you provide feedback because that is where you you, aff you affirm what they've got they've gotten right, and then you fill in learning gaps. And then again, you you assess the performance again uh, by by you know letting them understand how they can remember this information by enhancing retention which is number nine. And, and so Guanyi's nine events of for instruction works for online learning as well as face-to-face. -face. Uh, and as you can see in the different colors here, the first three are introduction. So when you're going to teach synchronous, how are you going to introduce the topic before you even present it? And in your presentation, what types of activities, what order are you going to present the information? And then how will learners be able to interact with the information for you to give them feedback? So I encourage you to look into these uh, nine events if you haven't been using them. Uh, you could actually use this tomorrow if you're teaching, just simply by gathering an understanding that this is what I want learners to know after I finish teaching. This is how I'm going to present the information. This is how I'm going to check for understanding. And this is how I'm going to assess them. So again, uh, you know, learning processes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, you know, we're going to create uh, breakout rooms. Uh, Travis, he stepped away. Can I answer a question for you? 
Oh yeah, okay. Uh, so we have about 30 people. So let's see if we can create about five breakout rooms. Or well, let's make it six so people can be able to talk. Great, Lily, can you help with that? So, yeah, I've just uh, created the rooms. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you all to the rooms. And basically, I, I want you guys to discuss what you know I just presented uh, with regards to buckboard design. Have you used it before? What degree? Uh, what it is? Quizzes, essays, discussion forums, projects, uh, student collaborative work, or checking for competencies like in the health professions. You know, just I want you guys to discuss what I just presented to see whether the buckle design, if you are familiar with uh, quality matters and the nine events, to see what is new about this, how have you used it, and kind of share so we can come back to the main room and, and share these uh, experiences. So if there are no questions, I'm gonna open the breakout rooms. How long will we have in the breakout rooms? Uh, let's give it seven minutes. Five, you know, five, about five to five, six minutes.
Okay, so we are all back um, uh, within your teams. If you know, if you guys can just uh, feel free to share what uh, you discussed with regards to these uh, frameworks and their implementations. Where, where do you see problems in implementing, or what what can you share to the team so we can learn from each other? So let's just go by any order, since we are running out of time. I can't remember which group we were in, but our group actually spent a lot of time talking about breakout rooms and having cameras on and how to encourage that and incentivize it. And so, um, as so we talked about like using backgrounds or ha having students um, potentially getting extra credit if they're willing to, you know, have a certain percentage of the class have their their cameras on, then the whole class can earn some extra credit. But ways of building community in our new Zoom reality is kind of where we went with our group. Yeah, that, that's a good observation. The, the, the key thing is one of my, uh, one of the faculty members that I work with here uh, decided to give extra points for people who will show their videos. But uh, he found out from one or two of them that were in the military who said that they couldn't do that because of security reasons. So but the good thing is that once you design your learning outcomes and know what you want, you are better able to make adjustments to meet the needs so you can make accommodations. Uh, so next person, what what uh, did you guys discuss? Hi, Jack. Sorry to jump in. We are just about out of time, and I apologize again for starting late. Um, if someone did have something to share, they can go ahead and share it quickly in the chat box, or you can go ahead and send it to Jack as well if you have any questions for him. I'm going to send a Google form in the chat. It's a feedback for the session and I apologize again for starting this late. But if you could go ahead and give us some feedback on the session and for our presenter as well, Jack. And I thank you again for joining us for our, T for our conference today. So thank you uh, for making the time to attend and uh, send me email about, you know, what, what you think as, you know, we, we can continue this conversation uh, after the conference. So thanks again for making the time. Uh, sorry about the time constraints. These things happen. But at least I was, I, I, I'm glad I had a chance to kind of go through the three frame, frameworks quickly. Uh, so have a great day. Enjoy the rest of the conference. And I hope to meet uh, some of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.